Inside the birds is back. What's up, everyone? Jeff Bosher, Adam Kaplan. For a very, Adam, I think this is a very important Inside the Birds. All right. It's important because we are now through the first week of free agency. And uh, I think it's a predictable reaction, right? We always talk about free agency and how crazy people get over it and sometimes overreactive um, to, to the signings. And we may have to talk some people off the ledge in this podcast because the reaction of the Eagles is like, whoa, great day one. Hassan Reddick serves a role. We went through it in the last podcast. And after that, it's just been crickets. You know, uh, a lot of uh, my, a lot, mostly in-house stuff that we've discussed and obviously not the splashier names that people like to see signed. But as we said, even before the free agency podcast, uh, before last week's podcast, we said, look, free agency. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it serves a purpose. Um, there's a certain way to go about it that we think is smart. You know, one-year veterans is smart to fill holes or guys on second contracts. Um, I personally am not a big fan of the older guys who get five or six years at ridiculous money. You know, um, sometimes it works, sometimes it really doesn't. It's a very hit or miss proposition. But I do understand, as we broaden the picture with the Eagles here, I kind of also understand the fact that the Eagles were not they – were, they were an okay team. We went over this. We said we came back from the combine. It's not People looked at their roster and, and thought, eh, it's okay. It's not great. Uh, it's got a lot of holes. And, you know, at this point, really their biggest upgrade, obviously, Hassan Red. They're probably, unless they tr make a trade or something, um, as far as the rest of free agency, there's not going to be a whole lot that's going to make – there's not going to be a signing out there that you think, oh, bam, now the Eagles are ready. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just not that – sort of caliber of free agent, but I still think there are good quality value players at certain positions that can help the Eagles. So I do want to talk people off the ledge in that regard. Sure. So, and on your point earlier, and in fact, uh, someone reached out to me on Twitter and, and said, where are the guys who are 26, 27, 28? Uh, Redick turns, I think, 28 in mm -hmm. um, this fall, but I, th I think October, if I remember right, correctly. Right, but that's yeah. fine. He, he's had a you know, pretty relatively injury-free career so you, you if he if he does his job he'll be here for three or four years that's great it's a yeah. good signing but where are the guys like malcolm jenkins who was 26 when he signed with the eagles uh rodney mcleod that what 2016 was around that age right brandon that's, brooks right brandon brooks a great example the, the the thing is and we're going to get into some of the guys some of the stuff is not out there which will will explain to you kind of where some of these guys were but um there are not a lot of guys out there. There's a reason why players become free agents. It a lot of guys like Malcolm Jenkins rarely become free agents. The the Saints and as as Sean Payton said, they made a major mistake um, letting him walk in in 2014. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, he said that was one of their. I don't know if he ranked them, but he said it was one of their their in, in his time. He could have pushed for it. Um, I don't think he quite knew that the leader that Malcolm was, and obviously they got him back. That he's going to most of the end his career there. He just turned 35 late this season, but, uh, you know, the Rodney McLeod one, another good one. It was a market deal it, after, as you said, after his first contract. And that's, that's ideally like what you'd like to find, but yep. those guys are very hard to find in free agency because these guys, because the available cap space is bigger this year than it clearly was last year. And it's going to be a monster. Uh, the, uh, the big TV money hits in 23. So, Teams now, that's why you're not seeing a lot of cuts. They're nowhere near the amount of cuts that you usually see. They're players cut, but we didn't see like dozens and dozens that people were speculating that that did not happen. Yeah, no, that's true. And and those were the, listen, Javon Hargrave was just two years ago. That is the that's perfect kind one. of free agent yeah. signing yeah. that falls in line with the ones we spoke about. And that's really what Hassan Redick is. Even though it's his, technically it's his third contract, it's sort of more like his second because he's young and because he was on a one-year prove-it after getting released from his rookie deal. So this is really an opportunity for him to kind of uh, be in a scheme that should cater to his strengths and really kind of come into his own. Um, or even if he just is what he is, that still should be something like 10 to 12 sacks, which is what the Eagles need uh, and that explosion off the edge. So that's a good signing. We'll see what they do. Uh, I, so I'm, I'm the type of person that does not like to um, – you resort to extremes to make a point. And I feel like it's kind of been out there that for people who are trying to say that the Eagles free agency doesn't have to be big or which is true, but then they say, you know, just look at what they did. They signed 
Maddox and Goddard and Mayalata and um, Sweat to extensions. And that's sort of like their free agency because those guys would have been free agents. I, I wouldn't use that as a good example. I see people are, have tried to do that and say that's really their free agency because my, re my response to that would be, well, all those guys played well last year, fairly well. Uh, got their contract extensions, but the Eagles still only won nine games, and they did it, you know, with a really, really easy back end schedule there. So just to say those are our free agent signings, and say we're retaining the core, that's that's our free agency. Well, I would say, well, then you're just retaining the core of a team that people just think are okay. You, the idea is to get better. They will get better. They have the draft. Uh, well, I'm listen. I assume they'll get better. They've got the draft. Yeah. They do have. There are guys out there, and here's my my philosophy. If you're if you're in the position the Eagles are in, where you've really you, you tried to get Marcus Williams didn't work out. There are a couple of wide receivers we'll talk about didn't work out. You know what they do best is get linemen, and there are some good defensive linemen out there who are not maybe household names or great, but who could come in and give you a lot of really good depth. Um, like when you signed uh, a Chris Long or we brought in a Michael Bennett. I mean Bennett's great. I'm not trying to say there's a Michael Bennett out there, but I still think there are some pretty decent linemen out there that maybe at this point you say, all right, we missed out on some of the skill guys, but we have money here and we have clear need, right? We talk about the need for depth at defensive end at tackle. So let's go put some, you know, a couple million to these guys and, and just get strong where we're strongest in the trenches. Cause that's worked out well for us in the past. Well, I'm going to disagree a little bit in that when you look at the six guys that they were, well, we're at Raven Clark and there's just a backup though, but if you look I was at the thinking five, D line, but I'm I'm sorry, I was thinking defensive line, not all. I got you know, but no, let okay. me go back to what you you were talking about the extensions. These dudes count because all of them remember Goddard's contract would be up, right. Sweat would be up, Mylatas would be up, TJ Edwards would be up, and Monty Maddox would be up. So if you sure. don't resign these guys, that's add to the needs that they still have. You're looking at like twelve needs. Oh yeah, least, no, no doubt. Listen, yeah. those were key. I, I'm I'm with you. Those were important. I'm not against them. I'm just saying if you use that to say that was. The big strike for the Eagles in free agency, I would I would just think it's fair to say, well, okay, but those guys were on a nine-win team, and you're trying to be 10, 11, and better. So to only get one guy right now add to the mix in Reddick, really, and everybody else is from last year's team, you still need more. You need to sure. get and better. Sure, and that's what we're going to do. Because, because yeah. I would say, Adam, I mean, I think there are some guys who can get better. Mylotta certainly can get better. I think Goddard's pretty good. I mean, I don't know how much better he's going to get. He's and, pretty good. And – Hands. Yes, well, catching the ball. Sweat, yeah. pretty good. Um, Maddox, pretty good for what they are. I don't think that you're going to see these guys get 35% better than they are now. Maybe Mylotta, just because he's so raw and has that ability. Yeah, I would just say this, though. Like, again, let's say none of these guys are extended, right? Mm -hmm. Until now. Let, let's say, you know, they headed into March. We're at the end of the season. None of them were extended. If you, I mean, we're going to get, we'll get through the remaining needs. There's still a lot of needs here. There's still yeah. a lot of needs with this team. This, 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 you know, some guy debated with me. He thought I was crazy saying this is a, is a very average uh, roster. I still think it is. In fact, I'm not the only one and you're not the only one who looks at the, you and I see it the same way. I think mm -hmm. they need a lot of work. Like they, they address the extensions, So they don't need a tight end right now. They could use one more for depth, but they don't need a starting tight end. They, they got sweat done. They still need a DE. They got my lot of done. They don't need a left tackle. Uh, they got TJ Edwards done. Okay. Could they still get an upgrade? Well, if this wasn't, if it was another team, yes, but they're probably not going to do that. Right. Do they need a slot corner? No, they just, they got that done. So they took, yep. they took some of the needs away, but the remaining needs are still there. As you said, they got, they got Reddick done. Okay. That takes right. away the strong side linebacker rush roll, mm -hmm. but they need a DN. They haven't got a corner done. They need two outside corners. Uh, they, they have other needs, which you're going to get into. So they still have a lot of work to do. But again, this is what you're alluding to. You can't solve every need, nor should you solve every need in free agency. That's not the way it works. Immediate yep. needs in free agency, long-term needs in the draft. Now, and there could be a combination of that. Now, guys like Malcolm Jenkins, again, these don't happen a lot where you so solve short-term and long-term needs with one guy. How many right. times are you going to get a super, like, I hate to say superstar, it's not fair, a <laughs> really solid safety for f five or six, seven or eight years? You're just not going to get that a lot in free agency. The, these things just rarely happen. And Rodney McCollum, how many times are you going to find guys like that? You can't count on it.
Yeah, no, no. And look, like we said, we, the Eagles have done a good job finding those type of guys, even beyond that, with Brooks and, and Javon Hargrave. Yeah. And I, I imagine Reddick will be in that line. And, you know, there are some teams that are going to get – I was just looking at the statistics. Well, I wasn't doing them, but I was looking at the free agents who signed last year, the year before, the year before that. And you go through the top 10 contracts, 50% of them worked out. You know, you can – some there's some gray area for some, but 50% of them – you can make a strong argument that they didn't work out for the the way the team was hoping when they gave that much money to the player. So it's a it's a it's it's a crapshoot like the draft is. It, but I yeah. do think the system that the Eagles have of trying to target younger second contract guys on the long term and then everybody else on the short one year deal is the best way to have success. So we will see. We some of the Eagles' best signings over the last few years have come in April and then even May and June. Some quality signings. Yeah, so we'll I see what they do. The only thing is, like, you can't count on. Like, I was looking back to seventeen. Uh, you know, getting, getting a uh, Legarrette Blunt after the draft. Like, right. And he was really on his. Like, he was at the point of his career where you just wonder what he had left, and who knew. And I don't want to say everything they did was luck. I mean, it just seemed like every free agent they signed. We've used the Patrick uh, Robinson example. Just about every – you mentioned Chris Long earlier. It just all worked out. And, yeah, you're right. You could get guys after the draft. But if you you at, you, you you cross off the list, the extensions, okay, those are the positions they filled. They still have work to do. We'll give them credit for the extensions. Hey, that, that counts. Obviously it does. Yep. These guys would have been free agents. But they still have needs, folks. They 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 had some misses where they tried, and we're, we're going to detail the best of our sources, mm-hmm. kind of what happened. And uh, we talked to some other teams that kind of had an idea – of why certain guys sign in certain places and why uh, one particular free agent, which we learned um, uh, another team could not believe what one of these guys, if there was a player the Eagles were on, you know, we're going to explain. And uh, this team overpaid significantly, I think uh, for a third D tackle, but it's another story for another time, which is going to be on the there, show. There you go. All right. So we've got a big week as well at inside the birds uh, today, Monday and Thursday inside the birds. We've got, the Intel with Greg Cosell continuing for another week. We are now switching uh, or shifting, I should say, from free agency to the draft because Greg's first four shows were all about free agency. Uh, and now we're going to get into what everybody loves, which is draft preview. The first position that we will go through with Greg Cosell is the wide receiver group. So that will come out on, uh, what do we do that on? Wednesday, correct? Yeah. Oh, Wednesday. yeah. Yeah. And by the way, I've talked mm-hmm. to him. I cannot wait for this one. My, this one might be a long one because I think he's done more work on skill position players he's probably ever done. Yep. And this is going to be fun, man. We because this is it's a major need for the Eagles. Still is because uh, they they were not unable to secure um, a veteran to this mm-hmm. point. I'm sure they're going to add one at some point, but they need an answer opposite Devonte Smith in the worst way. And they've got three first round picks and. 10 in this draft overall draft pick. So they got some so, work. Yeah. The, the theme of the week is going to be wide receiver because draft dreams with Andrew Dicheco, which we had an awesome first edition last week or a first episode with UTSA running back, sincere McCormick. Well, it continues this week. It'll drop Tuesday. Andrew Dicheco interviews SMU wide receiver, Danny Gray, who I thought had a pretty good combine, but Danny disagreed. So you'll have to check the uh, interview with Andrew, where he talks about his rise from being um, a pretty big recruit to a kid who had some adversity along the way, had to change some schools, and then really came into his own at SMU, which is kind of becoming wide receiver you. I mean, you got Cortland Sutton, you got Cole Beasley, James Prochet, Prochet from the Ravens there, and now Danny Gray hoping to uh, kind of add to that pipeline of SMU wide receivers. I think there's another. Oh, uh, Emmanuel Sanders, I believe, went to SMU. Yeah, so um, that'll be good. And uh, let's see. So we got Greg Cosell. We got Andrew Ducheco. And um, there'll be lots of stuff on InsideTheBirds.com as well. So make sure you head on over to InsideTheBirds.com. Please subscribe. It's free or have it come to your RSS feed. It's free. Uh, We really appreciate it. We've been putting up a lot of good work. Andrew Ducheco had his 2.0 mock draft recently which was uh quite the mock so uh did you did you happen to uh, catch it and agree with it yeah and yeah, absolutely in fact the the reaction to andrew's uh mock is you you put the link on twitter was great these are great look mock drafts are huge we know that we'll we'll do a staff one i guess once that draft start thursday is it is the first night thursday yeah 
Thursday. We'll probably drop it what Wednesday of that week, draft week. Uh, we usually drop it the you mean the mock draft? No, we'll yeah. do it on a Monday to give it a okay, couple okay. days for people. Yeah, it'll be our Monday uh pod. You know what I miss? This is really cool. This will take like 20 seconds. So back I'm gonna say easily 10 years. Uh Cosell and Jaws would have when Jaws was working at NFL films and ESPN, they had an mm-hmm. off the record mock draft. It was it, who's I've who? been in one. I've been in one of those. Oh, were, oh, okay. Were you there that year? One year? Yeah. You. Uh, I think you were either you invited me or somebody I know who invited me there. Yeah. And and there were a lot of really smart yeah. minds. Was, that. I learned a lot that day. It was it really was good. incredible. In fact, I learned my lesson. Uh, I I won't give away the person. It's a former G- NFL GM who who uh, who knows Bill Belichick said to me. We were we we're trying to figure out what year. It was like 06. The year that they took, uh, uh, not 06, it might have been 09, uh, Dante Hightower, whatever year he came out for the draft. I don't have it in front of me, mm-hmm. whatever year, year it was, but it could have been 12, whatever. Um, but he had not drafted a linebacker in the first round. So when it came to whoever was picking, they said, well, Belichick's never drafted a, a linebacker in the first round. And, and the guy said, it was 2012, okay, when he was drafted, first round. Mm-hmm. Don't be shocked if he drafts Hightower. Because they want to shore up, because they they started to adjust their defense a little bit, and and it just goes to show you when you think you know a team, mm-hmm. uh, you don't know a team. You think you do, and then other than the Eagles not drafting a linebacker in the first round for forty years, <laughs> yeah, over, over forty years, so it's, it's uh, actually forty three years uh, if they don't draft one this year. Jerry Robinson seventy nine. You, you know, you think you know a team, but every once in a while you go, wow, I didn't see that coming, and. May, I'm not again. I'm not saying that they're draft, the Eagles are drafting a linebacker this year in the first round. I'm sure, of course, that's not going to happen. But, and I hate to say this because people like to make fun of us. But at safety, maybe this is the year they do it in the second round. But we'll see. Uh, uh, I feel like I, I want to get that Kawhi Leonard laugh. That <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> every right. time you say that and just play right. it. Um, what was I going to say? They should get Jerry Robinson. Is he a lot? Is he alive? I, I think so. Yeah, say anything like yeah, you know, yeah. you know, the off off the wall yeah. here. I think because I don't know if he's alive or not, but they should bring him to Philly to ring the bell at a 76ers game. Well, first of all, <laughs> what the that actually would give it away. Let you know how like they have ex players, you know, read the pick out. Yeah, how great would that be if Jerry Robinson was the one, and they actually made the pick. Oh, I mean, that would be great. The linebacker. Be, I I little I would you you I would literally faint. <laughs> that would be really funny. <laughs> that would be hysterical. All right. Speaking of uh, oh, the, what are we talking about? The draft to get an opportunity. You know, we're looking forward to these kids uh, entering the NFL workforce. And of course, Inside the Birds is excited to welcome a new partner, Devacor. Over the last year, we've seen all what we've all seen, what's known as the great resignation. It's made it clear that there's no better time to change careers than right now. Devacor is a Philly area family owned career development company that helps guide hardworking professionals on the path to new and fulfilling careers. Unlike the big companies in the career development space that offer the same cookie cutter career advice and services, Devacor's certified career development team is hands-on, passionate, knowledgeable, and takes pride working closely with their clients to ensure that their experience is personalized and tailored to their needs. So whether you're in need of a new resume, a cover letter, a CV, or you want to optimize your LinkedIn profile, or just work with a career coach, Devacore has you covered in all spaces. So go to devacore.com slash birds to schedule a free 15-minute career coaching consultation to receive an exclusive 15% discount off your next order. That's devacore.com slash birds for a free 15-minute career coaching consultation and you get an exclusive 15% discount on your next order at Devacor. All right, my friends. Let us uh, talk about some of the moves the Eagles made, Adam, since our, our last podcast uh, came out. Uh, a lot of it is in-house worthy. Uh, Boston Scott, as we sort of suggested, he was going to go out there, look for something uh, better. But he comes back to the Eagles on a one-year deal that is going to be less than what the uh, franchise tender would have been, and that's, that's no, I'm sorry, the restricted friend, uh, restricted free agent tender, correct? correct. 
Um, so he will compete there for for. Do you know what the do, do we know the terms yet on that? I don't, I don't know. If I don't they're know. Out yet. One okay. year, yeah, we'll have the entire break. We've got the breakdown on some other stuff, but right. I'm just I still. We talked about this uh, before Fridgey started. I, I'm a huge Boston Scott fan. I, I just feel like he could have a better role elsewhere, unless Sirianni is willing to change his rotation. It's a two running back rotation plus Hurts. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see the point now. I understand, obviously, Scott didn't find the kind of deal he's looking for, but he's not going to play based on we know that we know that they love Kenny Gainwell. Okay, and he's the he's the guy he should be. He should be the, the first guy in off the bench behind Sanders. Mm-hmm. Unless so, unless one of these two guys gets hurt. And I understand they need depth. I get all that. But if I'm Boston Scott, I can't imagine. I, I don't know. I, I, well, you're I, answering I, your own question. I mean, don't, don't, if he had a better offer, he would have taken it. I have sure, to imagine. Sure, sure. I guess. But but here's the thing, though. I, actually, in that, we're not even to the draft yet. He could have waited a little bit. Now, now the Eagles gave him a little bit of money, a, little, a small guarantee. But the fact that's, that a, that, that's a tough position at running where they're, it's so fungible to kind of just wait it out sure. and wait it out, you know, like, yeah, like Eric Blunt could do it because of who he was. But yeah, I, I, I'm just surprised that t- other teams don't appreciate him like the Eagles do. What else could this guy do? I mean, I told you, if I were the Giants, I would have signed him, yeah, right. him from coming back from the, to the Eagles. Well, well, <laughs> they, they, they cut uh, Devontae Booker. That's a, you're right, absolutely right. So if, if I'm the Giants, well, I mean, I, I get it's a new coach staff, a new front office. Right. But man, they don't they don't have anyone as we speak. Uh to no, back up. They have Saquon. That's about yeah, it. Right? Other than him. Yeah, yeah to back yeah. up. I mean, yeah. All right. So Greg Ward also came back on a one year deal, which would have been less than the RFA tender. Uh, and he will sort of be in that. Now you said, oh, why doesn't this team value him? Well, they brought him back. So uh, maybe he'll 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 factor into the mix. I think that's the thing about Boston Scott, by the way, to go back to if you were Boston Scott, I wouldn't I would understand. If you said, you know what, I'm going to resign back there because the number one running back gets hurt a lot, and the number two running back, he's young, but I mean, he he's sure. not proven really a whole lot in the league. So I could be the number two running back in a finger snap, you know. So uh, sure, I can see how he could have visualized that. Uh, and then Greg Ward, obviously now uh, still with the receiver group, Anthony Harris signs a one year deal. It kind of felt after. No Marcus Williams and no Marcus May. And uh, was there another safety? I don't think there was another safety. No, you know, because they never were in on the kid from Tampa, Jordan Whitehead. Whitehead. Right. Yeah, that was not a guy that they were in on, as as I understand it. So yeah. um, it kind of felt like once they did not get Marcus Williams, that they were going to bring back either Rodney or Anthony. It doesn't surprise me they brought back Anthony. I think he's a little bit younger. And, of course, he, he he's – was coached by Gannon in Minnesota when Gannon was an assistant there, uh, position coach. So, correct. Yeah. So, so yeah. I, I, we, we, you and I had felt after uh, they did not get in May that they were probably going to resign one of the two of them. It was hard to predict that which guy it would be, but Harris obviously because of his experience with Gannon in terms of what type of defense he's using. As you said, it's a little bit younger than Rodney, and he doesn't have the injury history of Rodney McLeod. So. Uh, then, as we uh, first reported at the combine, uh, they were bringing back Andre Sachre in a one-year deal. Here are the details: eight eight seventy-five base. Mm-hmm. They did give him, as we had said, a small guarantee, twenty-five grand. I know it's not a lot of money, but they don't have to do this for an ex- exclusive rights free agent. Right, exclusive rights guys rarely get a, a signing bonus, so so good for them. And uh, he's a good story. He's a special teamer and a good one. I thought he was a good find. I'm I'm glad that they they did that with him because I thought he was somebody that you'd want to hold on to there. Um, we still get a lot of questions about Hassan Reddick. Uh, so I would just revert everybody back to, um, you know, any of our podcasts last week or our Intel with Greg Cosell last week, as far as the role for Hassan Reddick. Now, look, we've got to see it to really fully say a hundred percent, but our Intel is pretty strong on the fact that he's going to play that on the ball, strong side linebacker spot, but, it, but still be a pass rusher when they go into their nickel and dime packages. And when I say pass, he's going to be an edge rusher. And it's going to be a four-man rush, not a five-man line, most likely. Now, you know, John might blitz a little more and do some things, but when we're talking about the four linemen who are rushing, should be Reddick, should be Sweat, should be 
um, Javon Hargrave. And then as we kind of move this conversation along, Adam Fletcher Cox, that was an yeah. interesting situation. Um, so, so go, <laughs> this is complex. So detail for us what you've, you've learned about why they cut him and then why they brought him back that way. Yeah. So we do, what do we do? A ITV TV on this thing? The, the cut? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fans are begging us to do the, uh, we were with you folks. We were going to do a, a emergency pod. Yeah. Cause we were not expecting that one. Uh, so we did one. And uh, so what happened is he had bonus money due. The way it works, just for, for future reference, for any type of bonus money that's set to a day, they have to be cut the day before the money's due if you're going to cut them. Mm -hmm. Like if you, like for instance, Robert Woods had a roster bonus due on Sunday. So he was moved to the Titans on Saturday. At, at uh, So you, you have to do it the day before. So they cut him. Uh, Cox had bonus money due the uh, fifth day of the league year, I think, something like that, or third day mm -hmm. of the no, third day of the league year, which is which is Friday. So they cut him on on uh, Thursday, and they agreed to a re-signing on I think Saturday, one year deal worth total fourteen million. We don't have the breakdown yet, but here's what we know. I think you and I have kind of the same information. He really wanted to stay. Like I, I just the way he's explaining it by multiple people is he. Though he he's aware that he was available, I, I think uh, mm -hmm. you know at the trade deadline, he likes Philly, loves the organization. It's been treated really well, obviously been paid really well, <laughs> to say the least. But he's been a terrific Eagle. Um, though I think we all would agree he's not the same player he once was. He's probably still got two good years left in him. Here's the thing, though: if 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 you walk away from Cox, right? Let, let's say they cut him, as you said in our show, and you were right. When you cut this player, he's available to 31 other teams. So let's just say for argument's sake, he was gone, right? Mm -hmm. Where are you going here? You've got Hargrave is on the final year of his deal. Obviously, he could be a guy you, they could extend. Milton Williams, who they really like. I, I, I've just gotten a sense they still like him as a third D tackle. He's going to play a lot, plus he could play at end. They don't know about Tui Pelotu. They, they just don't have the depth. And that's that's I think that's why they wanted him back for just one year. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure really want to be back. But here's the question to you. Knowing his issues with the scheme last season, I get that he and Gannon got together. They found a common ground. Is he really going to be happy if they keep asking him to do the, the four I? I don't know. I, I'm sort of perplexed by it because, you know, if the Eagles were ready to move on and then he just said, hey, I want to come back. I have so many questions. What was 14 million the – Agreed upon price tag. I mean, who are you? Total, competing? I don't know what it is. I don't know. The That's a good point. Who are you yeah. competing against? Yeah. Uh, what was the market like for him? So I, everything. And, and again, yeah. What, if he's he was not. You're right that he wasn't happy with the scheme early. They worked some things out. He did play, I think, better even without the sack numbers there in the second half of the season. I mean, they also went all against some atrocious offensive lines. In the second half of the season, but oh god, oh yeah, you're uh, right. I would say more like this, the last quarter of the season. I don't, I don't well, want to lump Washington. Like New, I don't want to lump New Orleans and Denver in there. Sure, no, sure, but yeah. the, the, the Washington had all sorts of guys out. Yeah, the they Jets, were playing. The Giants, yeah, Giants are, were bad, but the Washington. I remember Giants. Excuse me, Washington bringing the guy up. In fact, it. I don't know if John Toth before was it Matt John Toth right? Was that the guy former Eagle? Uh, Brett Toth's what cousin? I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, it's something. I had a guy on the roster. I'm like this guy because even bringing Cox back, it's absolutely not precluding them from drafting a tackle in the first round, and uh, would not shock us if they did that. Oh, it wouldn't. Listen, I think there's three styles of pass rushers that are all potential first round draft picks for the Eagles. They can take a defensive end in the traditional sense. Someone who plays like Josh Sweat does, they could take a defensive tackle. They could take a strong side linebacker who has a who has pass rushing acumen, um, like you're getting with Hassan Reddick now. There are some of these guys who come out who have that same kind of either speed off the edge or size profile. Um, I've heard David Ojabo could be used in that way, like a stand up strong side linebacker. He's very raw, uh, and unfortunately, he got hurt, and that's really yeah, sad. And we'll see what happens yeah, with so. him. But even if he was not. Adam, I, you know, he was still considered more developmental than some of the yes. other, like like his teammate Aiden Hutchinson. Um, so I don't know Hutchinson's that his story, I don't know if he's going to go way out of the first or anything like that. Hutchinson's way more advanced, right? Uh, than uh, than a Jabo. I I think on a Jabo, because well, yeah, as we start our draft coverage later this week, but I just give you, a, I 
I asked a bunch of guys who were at the at the workout who know you know, they knew that he tore his Achilles. And I said, What do you think? You still think he goes to the first round? And one guy said, Absolutely. Yeah. He's, he was going to be a project anyway. He may or may not be able to play this season. You know, it's one thing to start practicing a little bit in August. But because it's an Achilles, he's a rookie and he's a developmental player, you can't expect him to contribute much. But a good team that doesn't need – let's say a team picking between 25 and 32 that doesn't need him to play year one where he could just learn, why why wouldn't you take him there? Right? No, uh, yeah, no, you're totally right. I mean, we've seen lately – now, granted, an Achilles can be, can be worse than, say, an ACL, right? But yeah. we have seen lately teams will take – I think the Titans have done it twice now, right? Didn't they take Caleb Farley last year? Farley, yeah, and he Farley? had – yeah, he, he yeah. had a – but they nailed it. They got the Jeff Simmons one. He had Jeffrey ACL. Simmons, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. two guys. Uh, I don't know, folks, if you caught it. What I I know he – I think we said this on the air with, with Coach. Or no, maybe this is off the air. We were talking about uh, with Greg. We had, This last show we did with Greg, it was great. The final 10 minutes, we actually got into some historical stuff. And I don't know if we taped this part of it, but I asked Greg about Rich, uh, Richard Seymour, and he said – he said he he said no one's Richard Seymour, but he said the closest player now to Richard Seymour in the NFL is Jeffrey Simmons, right? Who had been coming off the torn ACL, yes, right. And I mean the Eagles with Landon Dickerson, they took him now not first round, but really high in the second round. That guy tore his ACL in the SEC championship game, uh, and I think people do forget that when the Eagles drafted Sidney Jones in the second round in 2017, oh, yeah. he was he did play in the season finale. I think people forgot forget that, but he wound up playing in the season. It, it was a meaningless game for the Eagles. I think it was against the, the Cowboys, if I'm not mistaken. He went out there, and then he wound up um, leaving with a little bit of a hamstring mm. deal, but he made it back. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see with Ajabo. I just feel I feel terrible for the kid. But he is a kid that you can play as a stand-up rusher and kind oh, yeah. of groom into, a, oh, yeah. into that Sam backer in a certain style of defense like the Eagles play type spot. So so all three of those type of pass rushers I think are on the table for the Eagles as uh as they kind of look at what they do. But with Fletcher coming back, Adam, it does bring up that question about when Jonathan Gannon wants to rush the passer, right? Mm -hmm. Um and we didn't see a whole lot of blitzing and he's obviously not going to blitz every even if he blitzes more, it's not going to be every uh third down. But when he wants to rush the passer with his four rushers, we said Sweat and uh, Hassan Reddick on the edges, Hargrave in the middle, and that kind of opens up the door for maybe a rotation where you have Fletch Cox at, at times or if Cox come out. Brandon Graham, we'll have to see when he's ready. He has mm -hmm. been an interior rusher and a good one for the Eagles in the past, so he might now be um, you know, in the nickel. Hey, he might be a starter if he's ready to go. I don't, I don't know. I don't know yeah, how that's going to work out. Yeah. Too early to say. Yeah. Um, and uh, anybody that they draft could potentially be a starter if it's a first round pick. So it's and Milton Williams. So they've got a lot of different options for their four man rush. They may have a couple of different um, lines that that they like to rush but, the passer with. Right, but they still need a DN. They need a young DN. That, that it's it's oh, a yeah, need. Definitely. Now, as as you know, it's Monday morning as we speak. There's I don't see a DN that they would bring in who's definitely going to who's young. You know, as, as you're saying, the second contract guy. So right now. With Barnett on sign, and there's been no indication they're bringing him back. Even if he, even if they did, surprisingly, you would think a short-term deal anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's wet right now, where they extended. They Graham, we don't know yet where he has he's at physically. Milton Williams to me is more of an interior player than out exterior player on the outside there. Mm -hmm. Teron Jackson is a fourth end, so they they, they it's a, still a need. This is look, it's it's a, it's a fact. So they let me need, ask you something. Let me, let, just let's hypo sure. hypothesize here. Okay. Let's say Brandon Graham's ready to go by the first game. Okay? okay. So the Eagles come out on first down on defense, right? They've got Brandon Graham and Josh Sweat as their their defensive ends. They've got Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave as their tackles, and they've got Reddick there as the fifth guy on the D line. This is first down, right? They're in their base run stopping package. Okay. They do a good job, stop a couple of runs. Now it's third and five. All right. Who's coming off? For the four minutes, I just gave you five guys. Who's coming off when you're going to rush the passer there? That's a good question, but it, it, it's it, it's a, first of all, it's a good problem to have. But again, mm -hmm. remember now, the draft is not about immediate needs. It's about if whatever you get in year one is great. It's about yeah. the future. Oh, sure. Uh, but I just gave you five guys who are not even rookies. They're they're just five guys. Again, Randy, but, but again, Smith and the two tackles. In, in, right in nickel, the guys mm -hmm. you know have to be out there. Any pass rushing situation. Reddick, Sweat, Hargrave. Now, Cox, 
Yes, sometimes, sometimes not. We, we He's a guy, you got to see what he's got left in training camp. Obviously, they're paying 14 million. It's got to be a factor. Does he yeah. have to be in every nickel situation? No. No. It, it depends no. on how he looks. I, right. I'm not hey, look, I like it. They, they have part. depth. I'm sorry. That, yeah, they, 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 good. Well, they, they have, good they, they have some. Mm-hmm. They have some, but it, I'm looking for natural outside pass rushers. Who are those guys? Reddick, as a stand-up guy, not with his hand down. You Correct. can play with his hand down, but he's really a stand-up pass rusher. Right. Uh, Reddick. Brandon Graham, if, if he's got anything left. We'll see. Right. Well, hopefully he does. And Josh Sweat, absolutely. And he, the thing about Sweat was he got more and more comfortable standing up, but the big thing is when – uh, when Gannon started to realize, hey, I need to do a better job of using these guys and he let, in the second half of the season, mm-hmm. handful of snaps in the wide nine. Boy, and he looked great. And I, uh, Cosell said he looked really good when they went to the wide nine with him. So, you know, the hope with Gannon is he started to learn to be more flexible. And, you know, we're, we're only in March now, so we don't, we've got a long way to go here. But mm-hmm. I hope you learn from, hey, it's about players, not scheme. I know that they all say that but they don't always do that. And that's where he's got to do a better job of using personnel better because you're right. They have ability to do some rotation, but they still need a true DN who could, who, from an outside standpoint, who could get a field and get to the quarterback. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right. Um, let's move to the secondaries. Darius Slay restructured his contract. I mean, it wouldn't be an off season without somebody getting their, somebody over 30 getting their uh, deal restructured at him. Yeah, so a couple things here. You know, the we had some questions on this. The, the the teams are operating on the belief that next year's rise of the cap will be massive. Well, obviously, from last year because of COVID to this year, there was a nice rise, but right. the TV money comes in twenty three. So I know some teams are just creating cap space that they can move because you know, in the, under the CBA, whatever remaining cap space you have, you can move uh, to the next season. So. What they did is Slay's base salary is $16 million. They converted $14.88 million uh, of that into a signing bonus. He's making the minimum of $1.12 million. He signed through 2023. Yes, we. I know we're going to get these questions. Dummy years through 2026. I wish someone kept track of this. Like, <laughs> is there anyone? I wish we knew, like, the most dummy years total for a team. I'm thinking easily 60 years for the Eagles. <laughs> I'll have Jeff Mosher Jr. Uh, right. if he's ever born, go ahead and check on his tenth birthday. If uh, right, right, playing right. right now is still under contract, yeah, then the Eagles. Are <laughs> yeah. I wonder. Nah. if we have Joe Banner. We need to ask him. Was this his idea? <laughs> <laughs> man, the Saints been doing it even worse than. Oh no, yeah, you're right. Have. Oh, they they're the kings of it. You're absolutely right. Oh man, there's but no the, such thing as cap hell anymore. The king. The, in fact, the funny thing is that this time around, they had the, because the rise, the the big rise in the cap. They didn't have to cut very many players. I was kind of, I was pleasantly surprised that I, you know, I don't want anyone to lose their job, but they didn't make a lot of cuts. Actually, right. Buffalo was the one team that cut a bunch of players, but obviously they brought in and they went and signed Von Miller. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> right. So yeah. So that so I, I'm we don't like I, I guess I wouldn't rule out because the Eagles try to be very aggressive and we're getting in, we'll get into that in a, in a minute here but I can't rule out part of the reason why they did this is to move money to, towards next year but my point is this why would you do it now in March it's a little early for me I, I don't know I know some people thought there it was a specific clearing of cap space to load up for a big move I don't know I we'll see the Eagles have been quiet this has been the quietest off season. I can ever remember. And I think I said this last podcast, when you cover the Eagles for as long as we have, you know that when things are really, really quiet, that's when your radar needs to be up the most. Now, I don't know. I can't even think at this point who's available, like like in a, some kind of trade that maybe we're not thinking of. I, I have no idea. I, I, I have an idea. I, I'm, oh, not okay. it's gonna happen. I'm not going to say it's going to happen. Sure. But if I had the same thought over the weekend, I'm thinking, okay, is there a player who they had a good grade on that's, Kind of like Rodney McLeod or or um, or Malcolm Jenkins, but but the difference is that they're headed into the rookie final season. Kind of like Miles Sanders is, yep. Where they haven't extended him, and they, you know what? We love this guy. We, we're hearing through the agents they're not extending him. Let's call the general manager. Mm-hmm. Probably something like that. Maybe it's something that we're not thinking. Uh, the, who who enters? It was maybe some guys from the uh, 19, 20, 20, 21. 19 class or, or 18 class or guys on the fifth year option, something like that. Right. Because again, That's your, yeah. Who I look at too. 
Yes. So I, it could be something like that. I'm just a little surprised they did it this early with Slay. Here's another question for you off this. Now, he's, they mm-hmm. don't, obviously, they're not going to do it now. They just restructured to create some cap space. But he's been really good. There's no question. In fact, he's been better than Byron Jones, who's the guy they really wanted. Yeah. And not getting necess- necessitated that trade. But, boy, that trade has worked out pretty well. Mm-hmm. Would you extend his contract at the end of the season if he has another good year? Or do you want to just let him play it out? Darius Slay? Yeah. Would it be considered an extension or just another restructure since they've already kicked his contract down a few years? With, uh, I mean, you could give him more money. I mean, yeah, yeah. another good year. Uh, 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 just for one year, though. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd give him more money, I suppose, for for whatever his, cap, whatever his salary is supposed to be right. next year, the following year, I might well, kick it up a little bit. Here's the thing. Well, you don't want to pay him any more than $17 million. His last season, this year is $1.12 million. Seventeen million twenty three. Um, mm-hmm. There's no guaranteed money in twenty three. If, if his agent Drew Rosenhaus, I mean, he can. I mean, it's it's all up to him. What if he wants to approach the Eagles with this? Drew's pretty aggressive with this stuff. And the reason why I bring it up is again, not we don't know what the cap number will be. We don't know what the cap will be. Uh, is it going to be two hundred thirty million, two twenty? We don't know yet, but it's going to be pretty big uh, for around the league. But but uh, Slay's cap number is twenty six point zero one million. That's pretty high for a corner. Yeah, that's very high. So that's why I was just thinking, like, do they want to extend him? Because he's been really good, but you got to be careful. This is where they've made mistakes. The Jeffrey restructure was ridiculous the last time they did it. I, I couldn't they? I, I said it then. Of all people, just find somebody else to restructure. But he's been good so far. Uh, they don't need to do it, but it's in a good. It's a good thing to say this. They're running out of players to, to extend because they were so aggressive last season, right? Other than other than Sanders, who else would they? Oh, your guy uh, Hargrave. I know you've mentioned that a couple of times. Yeah, but again, they could do that at any time in the summer if sure. they want to. After all, their their moves are made. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, it just it was it was sort of interesting. Did you give the details by the way on the slave restructure? I didn't. I didn't. I oh, not have heard. Yes, I did. Yes, yes, yes. It was okay. Uh, so that all right. All right, so um, we'll talk about a few other moves in a second. First, make sure you download the top-rated DraftKings sportsbook app right now. And use the promo code ITB to get all of your sign-up bonuses. That's promo code ITB to get all your sign-up bonuses on the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app. Uh, we've gone through the fact that they re-signed J- Jason Kelsey, right? I think we, we've we handled that. Uh, okay. Do you have more details on the actual contract? Yeah, here's the details. So Okay. They did it again with a gym roster bonus. <laughs> that was this another thirty million dollars next year. I think it's thirty. I think I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> it's the same setup as June third. Uh, June third, I think it was thirty million. Uh, uh-huh. Nevertheless, one year, fourteen point two five million fully guaranteed at signing. It is what we had reported a couple weeks ago: ten point one three million signing bonus, three million fully guaranteed roster bonus, one point minimum base, one point one two base. Um, they just rewarded a guy who it's unheard of for a guy to be a legitimate all pro at 34 it's what really one of the more remarkable stories that you've i you and i've talked about um i can't uh, underestimate how remarkable it is that he could play at elite level at 34 years old it's just it's just unheard of it's uh and and well deserved and good for the eagles to do this they didn't have to do it uh he's been a great eagle we'll, we'll, it, now again he's I don't vote for the Hall of Fame, neither do you, but I think you and I would agree. I think this guy's in an absolute conversation to be a Hall of Famer. Yes, he's in the conversation to be a Hall of Famer. Right? I agree. Yeah, and I think he'll probably wind up making it. Mm, it's he, not a. It, there's not a lot of centers in the Hall of Fame, and um, mm. he's got what? What does he have? Six Pro Bowls and four All Pros, something like that. So, so right. yeah, yeah, something like that. So, yeah, I think he's got a really good shot shot to make. And the fact that he won a Super Bowl. Uh, the fact that he played well into his 30s and may have had his best year last year, I think will will help him. The fact that he's kind of um, the team ambassador in a big market, I do think that that helps as well. So uh, yeah, I, I I would think that he's going to make it. Um, so yeah, so the so Jason Kelly, so the whole conversation that we've been trying to have for two years now about who is going to be the next center, uh, we just have to then put that. Yeah. Next year, but then next year, we'll, maybe who knows? You may have another great year and want to come back. The way he, have, he, he right, he, just to, right before we move on here, they would have to redo the deal as structured, just yeah. like you said last year at this time. Yes, um, I, you're right. They don't know who. It's a good problem to have. They they don't. They're not sure how they want to handle 
uh, with Kelsey's replacement if he does finally retire. <laughs> right. Uh, after being 35 in November, I mean, you had him, I don't know how many years he could do this, but anyway, knock on wood, uh, it, whether it's say, say Malo or uh, Dickerson, uh, we'll have to see. And obviously Jeff Stoughton's going to have a lot to say about that. He will. All right. Well, the Eagles had to say goodbye to uh, a, a guy who was pretty popular. here. I mean, people enjoyed him in his sort of uh, it was pretty it was just a couple of years, but it was a nice little rise. And that was linebacker Alex Singleton. I do think he was fun to watch. He played with his hair on fire. He was good two years ago for in Jim Schwartz's defense. But we said that for a guy who's probably, you know, the third or fourth linebacker, probably the fourth linebacker to to give him the RFA tender. It's just too much. I mean, there's a chance he doesn't make the team, right? Sure. So um, he goes into free agency, and the Broncos sign him. So he uh, gets a new deal, and he is now a Denver Bronco. Yeah, so here, here's what we know. One-year deal, we're told he's got a small guarantee in the contract. They actually, mm-hmm. this is interesting, they actually tried to acquire him at the trade deadline last year. Eagles were not interested in trading him. I, I This is so long ago, you know, back in October. I don't remember the reason, but uh, they, they talked to the Eagles about him, but – I don't know what I don't know how obviously it didn't go very far, but uh, they yeah. they were kind of interested in him, so they got him. Um, and good for Alex; he's going to have a chance to play. I, I don't know, you know, if they're strongly considering him to start, but um, they liked him enough to give him a little bit of guaranteed money. And good for him. Uh, he he took he you know, he took his benching like a professional, and uh, you know he moves on here. And here's a guy who's a very good special teams player, and as he said. He would have been a backup here had he returned because they, they want Davion Taylor to start next to TJ Edwards because they're going to be a, you know a two linebacker defense anyway, right? Um, so that is that. Yes, Singleton moves so, on. So just basically to look at the the depth chart, you mentioned it. Your your top two linebackers as of right now, and we're talking about stacked off the ball linebackers. So we're not going to include Hassan Reddick in this conversation. Sure. Uh, your Mike and your Will, if you will, are uh, TJ Edwards. And Davion Taylor. You hope Davion comes back from the, the surgery that he has and he's ready to go. Uh, you also have Sean Bradley, you have who will compete. He's a good special teamer who'll compete to make the team. I, I'd be stunned if the Eagles don't draft a linebacker, <laughs> at least one linebacker. Now it'll probably okay. be in the fifth round, knowing the Eagles, but they're gonna draft one. <laughs> Throw him in the mix. Yeah. Uh Jacoby Stevens, right? He comes back. I mean, he he was on the practice squad. He'll he's compete. A, you know, he... Bradley's well, in, I'm down to number five here. So I know. I mean, well, Bradley's <laughs> going to be a special team early. He's really that's why they drafted him. Right. Um, you would like some comp. I know what you're getting. You'd like some competition for those guys, particularly uh Dave Taylor because of his injury history, which is pretty significant. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he what uh calf. Uh we're told a major Knee, calf MCL and quad at all different points. Yeah. Right. And we're told he had a major MCL sprain. Right. Uh, so last season. So, but apparently, like he you know, I know people say he's raw, and there's truth to that. But apparently, he was really getting the defense, mm-hmm. and then he got hurt again. So, you know, well, they drafted him to be a nickel linebacker, so the whole league is nickel, basically. Right. So, you know, he's he can run. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I agree with you. They really need to add depth of competition. So, let's yes, see. they need to sign a guy. I think they need to sign a one year veteran. I think they need to sign a one year veteran. Right. Well, I mean, you can't be a hundred percent certain you're going to come out of the draft with X number of linebackers. You just oh, yeah. you hope, but. But don't you think that, like, if T.J. Edwards got hurt, who's your middle linebacker? Oh, good point. Yeah, that don't have Because any- <laughs> <laughs> Singleton's gone, right? You're right. And if Davion right. Taylor gets yeah. hurt, which he get he's gotten hurt a lot, who who's lining up alongside him? But again, it's the the cash allocation of uh, linebacker is so small, they're not going to. Oh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a veteran minimum guy. Guy needs a job. That's what I mean. That's yeah. what I mean. But you're a right. One year veteran minimum guy. You absolutely. Need a, they need a backup middle linebacker. You're absolutely right. And again with. Taylor's injury history. Who's your in fact? We might as well look at this real quick because Jernard Avery is up. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Patrick Johnson is a guy they like to see. Play but again, he's 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 sort of the he and Avery play the Sam linebacker right. role. So maybe Patrick Johnson's the backup. Sam. Oh, you know who's still technically on the roster? I know people don't believe me, but he's, he is. You didn't believe me. What the Luther Ellis oh, kid? Joe Osman. Who? Joe oh, Osman. God, Joe Osman. That's right. Hey, no, he but he's, oh, he is. A, he's. A, the, but they converted him to the Sam linebacker, right? Didn't they? Yeah, I think it, he got he got hurt. I don't know. I think they they waved him injured. Right. Uh, so I don't know. He's technically on the roster. So well, he, you know, he's got to work his way up. So yeah, you're right. They have to add one guy. Yeah. One guy. 
middle. You gotta yeah. add guy. Well, I mean, they have to have one guy who's in free agency, right. I mean, and then they need to draft that posi- at that position as well. Well, they let, let's put it this way: they need to add a guy who's got versatility. A veteran. It would be nice if they added a veteran who could play multiple positions, right? Just for insurance policy, as you said, for T.J. Edwards. So that would be it. It's funny. I, I look at my needs, which are still pretty extensive for them. Mm-hmm. They haven't solved a lot of them. If you just look at past the 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 player extensions, Goddard, Sweat, Milotic, uh, Edwards, and Maddox. Right. Raven Clark is another backup, one year, $1.1 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, they still have a lot of needs. Like, we'll get to that in a couple minutes here. But, the, you know, sure. they... They, it's uh, the, the the guys that they they missed out on. It 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 now it now gives them more needs. Yeah, they have needs. They got a lot of needs. So we will see what they do at linebacker. As you're right, Adam, they still have a lot of questions that they went into the off season with. Uh, just wanted to go through really quickly. I know we'd mentioned it uh, before, but again, the player extensions that they gave out during the season. There were a lot of years and a lot of money involved there um we talked dallas goddard josh sweat jordan maialata you mentioned Raven clark tj edwards if people remember got a one-year extension and avante maddox got three years so you know maialata and goddard got the four years sweat and maddox got three uh and then it was one year for clark and edwards so i mean all these people were were well without raven and clark la raven clark aside all these people were pretty important to what the eagles were doing last year Right, they count, and 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 that's what I was saying earlier. Okay, they don't need to draft a tight end now. They don't need to add a significant tight end. They don't need to add, um, you know, a slot corner. Right. But it, and I guess they got sweat done. That's huge. But on the other side, it's still a need. They still could probably. The fact they, I know they need another tight end. They have to add one more tight end. No, mm-hmm. have to be a guy in the second round. No, because if you add a tight end in the second round, now you're talking. You got to go twelve personnel again. Just so on a young guy in the mix to to bring in competition for those backups. A guy who's got a versatility. Jack Stoll's decent, but you're looking for competition for him. I expect them if they I don't know how we don't know how if they're gonna I mean, we don't know how many picks they're gonna wind up having. I guess they have ten now. They didn't get any compensatory picks, by the way. We should mention that. Um, which was expected. But you know that they're gonna make some trades and they may wind up only having eight picks, who knows? But the fact mm-hmm. of the matter is um, after all of these, uh, after all of these extensions, and that's part of free agency uh, because they they could have done them now or they could have done them last year. They still have a lot of needs because they were trying to be aggressive right out the shoot. But as you said earlier, they missed on some guys. All right, we'll get into those misses in a second. I just want to point out uh, Jordan Mailata's four year, sixty four million dollar deal, which is uh, my quick math tells me uh, sixteen million a year. Yes. It's pretty darn good when you see Christian Kirk making eighteen and a half million a year. A your point. left tackle is making your good left tackle is making less money than Christian Kirk. I mean, he is depending on who you speak with. My lot is a top five, top seven left tackle. You know, mm-hmm. Again, depending on who you you know, we're not experts here on these things, but you, you talk to people from other teams who, who watch all the teams and they'll go, "Wow, this guy's really good." As you said earlier, he could even get better. He'll be more consistent with his hands and so forth, technique. Uh, but this is. It's a bargain in that if he continues to progress and does stay healthy, because remember now he's he's still guys learning, and he had the back problem which really limited him the first couple of years. It's a bargain on the surface of sixty million a year. Now there's some upside to it uh, for Pro Bowls and so forth, and but the fact of the matter is that that it was good that the Eagles got that done and didn't wait. Because think about this one. What if they waited? I think they got this done, what, in September, if I'm not mistaken, early in the season? It was early. No, it was August. It was right on okay. the eve of training camp, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Or or right before the season started. Th- it was no, actually- you're right. It was September. That's true. It was right before the but season early, started. Early. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. So think about it. What if they – because he had a really good year. What if they waited till now? That thing would have been – Either oh, free if, he, or if he walked into free agency, who oh, man? So they well, here's the thing: they would have tagged him. He wouldn't go anywhere, obviously. Yeah, that's true. But that's true. If they want to extend him, it would it would have to be twenty million plus. Yeah, and even the tag would have been expensive for a year. Yeah, you I know, the tag would be. But, but the point is, you know, off mm-hmm. But no, that's that's why you try to get guys done early. No, that's uh, credit to Roseman and the front office for getting the stuff done. And but the fact of the matter is. You know, as you as you tally up all those extensions, that's great that they did that, and that does count. But <laughs> if you look at the remaining needs list, man, they got a lot of work to do. 
They do have a lot of work to do. I want to talk about that. Um, real quick, I'm just I'm just trying to <laughs> take a gauge here of the uh, of the left tackle market. You know, I guess we we at the, at the point of us doing this right now, Teron Armstead has not talked. I mean, has not signed a contract. Yet, but he yeah. will. He'll probably reset the market, and then you can. He's actually going to the Dolphins. Yes. Um, and then I was also told he doesn't. You know, right now he did. As you know. When you you and I first started cover this business, oh God! If you didn't visit, then it doesn't count. You know, they make right. up, players rarely visit anymore. It's I funny. know. <laughs> you got to think though; he's probably going to make upwards of twenty to twenty four million dollars a year. Should um, be when should he be. signs. So you that'll just show you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's older. Right. He's older too. He's in his thirties. He's missed a lot of time. He is. Lead he is. lead talent though, no doubt. All right, uh, make sure you're checking out our friends at phlsportsnation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams for the fan, by the fan. That's their motto, so make sure you check out all their great coverage and content on phlsportsnation.com and on Twitter at phlsportsnation. We'll pause real quick for another word from our great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. If you happen to hop out there in uh, Westchester, PA, at the headquarters of Sky Motor Cars, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You'll get a great deal. All right. Well, the reason, Adam, that the Eagles still have some holes, specifically in certain positions, is because they just weren't able to land some of the guys um, that they had, uh, you know, their feelers out for. We talked about that a little bit last week at at wide receiver. Uh, and since then, a couple have finally signed. Uh, why, you know, Allen Robinson was out there for a while. He wound up signing with the LA Rams. Um, he got good good money for someone who was perceivably maybe in decline or or no longer able to play maybe on the outside as much as you want to. But the Rams clearly have some confidence in him. That so country. yeah, um, w- what we're told is that uh, they were definitely in on him. They talk money with the agents. They being the Eagles. Yes, yes, they mm-hmm. were. They they looked into it. Let, this is the real talk. I know there were rumors. We wanted. We weren't going to report anything until we actually found out right. uh, from uh, people around the league. So yeah, they were definitely in on it. A um, couple things about we know from uh, actually one really good bear source said that. Who knows Robinson? He said that look, he really. If you look at his career, he wouldn't come out and criticize the quarterbacks he played with, but a chance to not only win a Super Bowl. But to play with Matthew Stafford, who just got a major extension, who's a, he's an elite player, really. You know, you put p- good players around Stafford. Now he looks like he should have looked years ago. But anyway, he jumped at the chance, this person said, to – to it had no slight against the Eagles or the other teams in on it. It wasn't just the Eagles and the Rams or other teams in on this uh, trying to get him. But uh, $15.5 million is a fair deal. As you said, look, he missed a lot of time last year with a hamstring injury. He's not as old as you think. He turns 29 uh, in the summer. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I don't. I, I I have no idea how close the Eagles were. But the fact of the matter is, uh, there were, there were some teams in on this. The Eagles were one of them. We're told, and um, he goes to the Rams. And if the funny thing is, you mentioned slot. That's where that m- most of the time. That's where Cooper Cup is. So I, I don't know where the Eagles saw him lining up in potentially. But I know this. A lot of teams thought, and and I know the Bears definitely last year wanted to move him to the slot, but they couldn't because they didn't have another X receiver. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I do. I'm r- really curious how they're going to use Robinson because he doesn't have the downfield speed. He's really good at, at, on the short area, but uh, you know the Eagles are they're still looking for receivers. They they definitely uh, you know the Calvin Ridley story that Jay Glazer reported and that that gave, gave the answers to the test. Yep, that tells you all you need to know. They're acknowledging it. You don't need to guess. They're telling you by doing that. And the Robinson story, it's not a guess. It's a truth. So right. Um, I'm very curious, as you said earlier, to start the show, there are not a lot of receivers left. No, and another one that went, uh, you know, in the last few days was Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, he finally signed with the Chiefs, uh, in a one-year deal. As I, I told, I said, if anybody was willing to go to two, they'd probably get Juju. So the Chiefs didn't go to two, but they gave him a maximum a chance to earn up to 10.75 mil, which may not sound like a lot given the wide receiver market, but... Um, here's what we know as far as the Eagles' involvement and even some other teams. Um, he's coming off playing just five games from the shoulder surgery, right? 
Um, he also has, from what I understand, a, a knee that he manages. He just has to manage it. You know, we talk about Jason Kelsey. He's got a foot thing that he always has to manage. He's, he does well with it. But, you know, when you're coming off only playing five games and from the shoulder surgery, and then that's another thing, teams got scared. And so the Eagles had checked it. We had reported this going into the week of free agency, that, that he was on their list of guys to check into, to be interested in, you know, have internal discussions about. But as it got closer down to the wire of who was going to be in on him. I know that the, the Steelers were trying to bring him back and the Chiefs oh, were pretty aggressive. Were they? Um, okay. Yeah, so. the, the Eagles were not there at the end with those teams. It sounded, you know, they, they clearly didn't want to go to 10.75 sure. oh. there that Chiefs would be uh, willing to uh, go with incentives. By the way, on that contract, Pro Football Talk reported, like, it's only really like a one-year $4 million deal in that range. Right. There's a ton right. of incentives. So there's a lot of, I hate to say fluff, but there's a lot of, incentives where it, he'd have to really have a kick-ass year for uh to make anywhere close to 10 million yeah uh, but i do believe your note on the knee multiple teams we heard uh i they just there's something with the knee it's not serious it's just as you said it had to be managed managed right um and the tape we told we were told he looked more explosive in previous years now again with ben roethlisberger if you looked at deontay johnson and juju smith schuster and others their yards per catch number the last years was much lower than it normally would be if they had a quarterback who was uh, was able to throw the ball downfield and that was the problem mm -hmm. uh for ben because he just could not after the the tommy john surgery uh though i when i was at training camp uh last summer i thought he looked okay but he didn't look good enough in, in regular season he's now retired and, that, and now they've got uh mitch trubisky but the fact of the matter is uh juju was you know he had a high per, uh, ca per catch average uh in his rookie season mm -hmm. it's barely gone down and you do wonder now though remember the chiefs tried to get him last year and he spurned them and went to uh went back to pittsburgh which was i know that the steel reporters couldn't believe it because the only receiver they've given a second contract to uh, previously was uh antonio brown right so uh that was surprising but nevertheless there's your juju intel yeah so juju and i think that was smart of juju to kind of go after the chiefs what they were offering because as long as he's healthy he should get plenty of targets in that offense with tyreek hill and of course travis kelsey he should be a pretty t well targeted number three now i i looked into whether or not Miko hardman would now become available because they brought on juju and i'm told the chiefs are not chopping him so oh okay. um you know now could that change yes. who knows but at the moment it's not that he's like readily available just because they signed Juju. Because remember, they did lose Byron Pringle yes. in free agency to the Bears. True. So the amazing story about uh, me, Cole Hardman, is something we we reported a couple of years ago and probably mentioned once or twice is that me, Cole Hardman was somehow in 2019. It was that was when they were the Eagles were trying to trade out of the the spot was um, for JJ Ortega Whiteside with the Jets. The mm -hmm. Jets wanted. Uh, Mike McCagnan, then the uh, it was his last draft, then Joe Douglas came in after the 19 draft. I believe that's the timeline, but anyway, right? Uh, they the Jets wanted me call Hardman, and then what happened was the the Chiefs either I don't have the, the, the draft order in front of me, but uh, the Eagles were talking to them about doing a deal, and then it all fell through once uh, the, the Chiefs drafted Hardman. So it's just funny how that works out sometimes, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, where, where do the Eagles go from here? Adam, I mean, uh, they need a wide receiver. We've talked, they want one. They've clearly shown enough interest, yeah. but now the talent has really thinned out. I mean, you know, they might even be able to wait a little bit. I have no idea, but do you got any kind of feels for where they might go now? The only name we heard at the combine, we continue to hear is Zach Pascal. Makes sense with his Colts pedigree. Yeah. yeah. It, he's a really good backup. He had this, he started some games because they didn't, other than Michael Pittman and T.Y. Hilton has been hurt a lot the last couple of years. His, his contract is up. Right. Um, he's a really great story as an undrafted free agent. He's bounced around, uh, hard worker, but he's a back. He's a really good backup. He mm -hmm. doesn't solve the need for a guy to start opposite Smith. They they need to find someone. I, see, here's the thing. Okay, Sirianni said that uh, Quez Watkins could be one of the best number twos he's ever worked with. That's fine, but then how do you explain Calvin Ridley and Allen Robinson? Yeah. So uh, I think that's a great point. Why are you right. going after those guys if you got someone that you right. really think right. is going to be the, one of the best number twos you ever work with? No, right. I, that's right. a fair point. Right. Fair. So I, I don't 
I'm running. I'm running on an answer receiver. Like people have asked us about Sammy Watkins, I'd be shocked. He, he's been hurt a lot. I, I know he's. It's been years since he's a like a good player. I would say. Yeah, I, I, that wouldn't move the needle for me. A lot of know? injuries. Look, why? 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 I'd rather have Zach Pasco in a heartbeat. Yeah, I want someone who gets open. I know. I know he doesn't run all that well, but you know what? He's productive. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Julio Jones, um, uh, Titan sources. Um, I'm going to be as nice as I can. Um, there's a reason why they decided to swallow the two million dollars they owed him of his, third, his base salary. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's just say that trade didn't work out, and we'll see if Julio Jones could. I mean, I, I don't know if I assume he still wants to play. Uh, let's just say that there's a reason why they cut him. Yeah, now, I, I, that 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 did not work out for them. No, at, at all. <laughs> it really didn't. You know, they, and here's the thing. They really needed him last year. They uh, they were very late at wide receiver. And um, I understand why they made the trade. But, uh, you know, he's older now. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. We know that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know how much he has left. See, the names that are out there, right? Uh, we were told as of Sunday night that the Eagles were not interested in MVS, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Mm-hmm. We didn't have a drop last season. But uh, our understanding was that they weren't involved in that one. Uh, Cole Beasley, as you mentioned earlier, he was cut. He's only a slot receiver. James is the crowd only a slot receiver. A lot of injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, AJ, AJ Green's out there. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to that. No, not at all. Not at all. But we hadn't heard that they were in on him, so we'll see. Mm-hmm. All right, we, we shall see. Your What's guy? That? Who's my guy? You know who your guy is because you, you – Oh, yes, of course. My I got to give you credit. I got to give you credit. In fact, for fantasy, he was very good. Laquan Treadwell, I crushed him last year. Kid can play. He can play. No, he now now he went after. He knew. Uh, we actually talked to Rick Spielman about him. Uh, mm-hmm. Rick gave us some great information. Uh, he just kind of had to get out of his own head and just he, mm-hmm. he, maybe he's trying too hard. He, he just mm-hmm. did, he put a lot of pressure on himself. It, it now that was with Minnesota with Jackson. He was a former first round pick with Jacksonville. He did a really good job. He's pressing the service. I yep. I would you know if you and I were on the show, I absolutely would sign him. I don't care that he has to run in the four fours. Who cares? No. Yeah. You don't need, you got enough speed there. I mean, you, you know, you got Watkins, maybe Jalen Rager is able to kind of put some things together. Right. And of course, yeah. Devonte Smith. The guy's got a body. He can get open. He's young enough. And he's motivated. Right. I, I would, I'd be all into it, man. I, I, I just want people could catch the football and get open. Could someone can make a play? That, that would be very nice. That would be nice. All right, let's move away from, from wide receiver. We'll keep an eye on Zach Pascal as things go uh, forward. You know, Matt Ioannidis is a guy, when he got released from Washington, A, I was a little surprised, but I know that they had, you know, cap once they took Carson Wentz on, they took a lot of money on. But uh, I thought that this, this is what I'm talking about, the example of when, when you have money to spend in free agency, you miss out on some of your big guys, go to your strengths. You know, you need – you can always use defensive linemen. They do need a, a third defensive tackle – Ioannidis is young. I think he's a good player, local kid. I, I, you know, I don't know if the Eagles were in on him or not, but I I feel like, you know, that would have been a guy I would have tried to match somebody's offer for. He goes to Carolina Panthers. Well, they were in on it. Um, I had a GM tell me, obviously not the Eagles GM, but another GM told me when they took a a look at the deal, he said, no, thanks. Mm. Uh, I have no, I I just know the Eagles had interest in him. Um, which is interesting because they knew at the time Cox is coming back and they have Hargrave and they have Milton Williams. But as we were talking about earlier, you don't know if Cox is going to play anywhere near the amount of snaps as he did. Milton Williams will probably see some time at DN. Mm-hmm. Like, like someone in the rotation. So what it tells me is the Eagles are still looking, which they should be. And we said earlier, probably the draft. Um, but $5.8 million fully guaranteed at signing. Are you serious? I would have paid it. I really would have. Oh, no, not the ego. But you can't hear you. Uh, listen, here's the thing. I agree he's good. Well, then I, pr- I probably also wouldn't have then yeah, given Fletch 14 mil. So I understand what right. you're saying. Now, why would you pay? Let's say they wanted to get him. They had to pay $6 million to be a backup DT. doesn't make yeah, sense. I agree with you on that. For the Eagles, to me, the vet, type of veteran, there are, there's still, though there were a bunch of D tackles leaving over the weekend, Friday and Saturday. There's mm-hmm. still like 20 guys out there who are all – you can get these guys for two or three million a year. That's the kind of guy if the Eagles are going to sign a veteran that they need to sign. Yeah, I get it. Guess yeah. who Matt Ioannidis played for? Matt Rule. Matt Rule. There you go. Well, they lost Hassan Reddick, right? So they had to get the best available Temple player <laughs> right. to fill he's, his role. He said they got Robbie there. They got PJ there. They have um, who are they? Colin Thompson. Yep. There. Yep. 
So yeah. I mean, they have they got to get as many Temple guys as they can, or else you know, what's Matt Rule? Right, no, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Look, he's a good player. Uh, I have no idea what kind of money they talk to, but there's no way to hell they're paying anywhere close to five eight. Um, yeah. I, this GM told me he goes, "Look, we I, it, this is an AFC team. I can't say the team, but he said, look, we we wanted a third tackle. He's like, we 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 project him for three million. I'm like, okay, I could I could see that, but he didn't yep. say whether he would start or not. They wanted. I thought the guy said third tackle. He might have meant rotational guy, but anyway, mm-hmm. five eight is ridiculous. I mean, and it's up to I, the details that I have. Five eight fully guaranteed at signing. Five nine with a hundred grand incentive. Wow." I, I mean, that is probably the happiest guy in the world he got cut from Washington. And how about his agent? One of his agents, um, Alan Herman, went on the record to crush the red. I should uh, say yes, I saw Washington. that. I saw that. Yeah. yeah, not the first person to put their name on the record to crushing the, the Washington franchise. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> They're mean, just getting wow. trucked by everybody left and right. And look, they deserve it. They deserve it. Yeah. So so that that so that's so yeah. So the Eagles look, you were right when you'd said you had a feeling the Eagles were going to be aggressive. Think about this, right? Let's say they got okay. They got Reddick. They right out the bat, fifth, three years, forty-five million, fifty million per year, mm-hmm. first year guarantee. What if they got Al Robinson? Right, he would have started on the outside. He would have been that phys- that veteran, great for the locker room, uh, competitive, exactly what they need. Right, and it probably would have been two-year structure until you bring the younger guy along who they draft at some point or Juju for one year. Okay. Um, it. it I think we have a different outlook. Is Juju enough? No. Okay. And Marcus Williams, we'll get to him. I know you have details on it. Well, let, let's say they got Juju and Marcus Williams. Would you feel better about this? Oh, yeah. Hell, hell yeah. If they got Juju, and how, how would you not feel better? I mean, more so Marcus Williams than Juju. I mean, Juju's nice, but um, I think he's a better fit on a team with an advanced passing offense like Kansas City has. But Marcus Williams, yeah, sure. Sure. I think you would have felt that that's similar to when we talked about getting like Brandon Brooks and McLeod in that same free two two guys who are going to really help your 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 franchise and and kind sure. of bring you from where you are to where you want to be as you build the nucleus as well. So uh, yeah, and look, they were there, they were competitive, they were right there with Marcus Williams. You know, like I think I said in the last podcast, uh, but you could consider it kind of a similar offer. But Marcus Williams chose the Baltimore Ravens, and mm. there's not much you can do about that. And you know, it really was. Happened? So, so was, it was it, so let me ask a question off that. You said it was similar. I, I don't have the detail, the breakdown of Marcus Williams contract, but so you think they kind of gave him, matched it or came very close to matching it. And he decided to go to Baltimore, right? Is that, I was told they were, it was, they were very competitive and sort of the words that was like right there okay. with, with Baltimore. And he decided to take the Ravens offer. So, you know, okay. So we need to address this because we're, we've got questions about it. And I, I promised one guy we would address it. You've seen and the talk radio, especially in Philly, because so we don't have the whole list. We don't know all the players the Eagles were on. We know about maybe five or six of them. I'm sure they ran on like every team's on a lot of players, but you can't pay everybody and you have a, a cash budget. Mm-hmm. How much you're going to spend. And they did what they, they set a level of money they were going to offer. And they tried that. And, and they, they, there's some players they just didn't get. So do you think there's any truth to this? Or and I think it's worth talking about, you know, why are players not coming to Philly? Well, you know, we started this discussion a couple of weeks ago when it was just really a, a Russell Wilson and yeah. Byron Jones conversation. And then Deshaun Watson factoring into the mix. And then Marcus Williams now became the latest. And to be honest with you, I think, the same situation just happened with the wide receiver that the uh, the Rams traded right to um, Tennessee, Robert, Wood. Robert Woods. You didn't know that? I didn't hear his name. Correct? Was he? In, I-, uh, I, I saw a report saying the Eagles were in, but they basically said to Rob, "We're not. You know, w- where do you want to go?" And he Uh-oh. said, "I want to go to the Titans." Really? So, if you oh. want to add that to the list, okay. and again, I, I you know I don't know when it becomes a bunch of coincidences or wow. a big enough sample size, but I'll just reiterate when when I was on the Eagles beat as a youngin, right, two thousand five, two thousand six, yeah. two thousand seven, you know, John Runyon wanted to come. Of course, of course, the Eagles were paying, but Runyon mm-hmm. came here, Curse came here, To couldn't wait to get here. That was a trade, but he was so happy to be here when he did get here. I mean, obviously, it felt fell apart quickly Mm -hmm. um asante samuel top of the line corner you could argue he was the number one i think free agent that year at any position signed with the eagles so they were willing to go 
to Philadelphia. And Andy Reid was a big part of that and the culture that they established. And, you know, what started off as maybe just, well, maybe Russell Wilson's wired differently, or maybe Byron Jones wanted to go to Miami. Can't, I mean, now is kind of, I, I do think if the Eagles were, and I know they won a Super Bowl, nobody needs to remind me just, just five years ago, but they've kind of been through a lot of peril over the last year or two, even with making the playoffs. And I, you know, I don't know how much of that instability and the fact that they've had what, like four or five different quarterbacks in the last seven or eight years. I, I don't know. I really don't. I, I don't know well, if the teams just see other spots now. It, it may not be like, I don't see the Eagles as desirable. It just may be that other spots are now more desirable when that used to be what the Eagles were in Andy Reid's heyday. Well, here's a question off that. Do they want to play or not play with Hertz? Cause you obviously want to play uh, Allen Robinson other than getting 15 and a half million a year. Uh, you know, he wanted to play with Stafford, right. uh, Robert Woods. Wouldn't you want to play with Josh Allen? I mean, my goodness gracious, the, the guys, he might be the best quarterback in football right now. He's, he was, he's unbelievable. So I, Jalen hurts. We don't know. I mean, you talk about stability, but nobody knows if hurts will be the starter past this season. So, and we know about the rumored interest, which, uh, never really went away on Deshaun Watson. Quite frankly, the Eagles always had interest. He just didn't want to meet with him. So right. that's what, it's it's worth talking about because it's true. So Yeah, let me try to couch it this way. I don't want to be perceived as saying that I think that people don't want to play for the Eagles. I, I would say it more like I, I, I think people – it's more that people have a desire to play elsewhere for whatever reason – than they do for the Eagles, whereas in the past, I see what you people mean. had that desire to play for the e Namdi sure. Asamoah came here because he wanted to play for Andy Reid. Right, well, that was a big thing. He, <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, everybody comes because you pay them, but yeah. there were other teams in the mix to pay him similarly, and yeah. then the Eagles sweeten yeah. it, and then all of a yeah. sudden, bam! I want to play for Andy. Yeah. You know, thank you because I now had now I don't have to go to the Jets or something like I that. Got right? you. So uh, that's fair. So yeah, uh, that's what I would say. Uh, and we don't know what these agents are thinking, you know, because this a lot of his agent driven. I understand they're doing their job. I, I get it, uh, but it's just weird. Like I, I dismiss a lot of this talk, but when you when you line up so many players, quarterbacks, and I, I understand like this isn't the NBA where players control everything. Whereas here, players are getting a little bit more control. Mm -hmm. but it's always going to be about money and also quarterback. I, I think that's part of it. There's no way to quantify all this. But it's fair to discuss it because I know it's out there and I, I felt it's fair to discuss it because people keep asking us. Yeah, I just and, think we uh, need to put it in the right context yeah. and not over-dramatize and say, oh, it's a clear sign that, that people hate the ego. No, 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 no. That, like the Jets have been a pretty bad friend. They still wind up signing free agents. So, I mean, it's it's just a little bit of a different dynamic than it used to be. Mm -hmm. And that's that's noteworthy is, is all you know yep. we can make of it right now. All right, that's going to be it for this edition of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. Big thanks, as always, to our producer, Hunter Brody. You can check out his work on YouTube. It's called Sports Talk with Broads. He's got a great website called broadsmedia.com. And as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the birds.